Hey everyone, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast brought to you by Ruger. I'm your host, Christy Titus. Thank you for tuning in. The line is going hot, so let's go full send on this episode. Since 1949, Ruger has embodied the spirit of hunting in America. Ruger firearms are built to deliver the reliable and accurate performance that seasoned veterans demand and new hunters can trust. At Ruger, we believe that hunting is about more than just the thrill of the chase. It's about the freedom and opportunity that come with it. This is our heritage, and this is Ruger. Hey everybody, thank you for joining us for the Wild and Uncut podcast. Yogi and I are in the beautiful Steens Mountain of Oregon for the cash out mule deer season ending. Cash out season ending, yeah. We're mule deer hunting out here. We've been here here for a long time. Uh, Yeah, we've been here. Today is uh, 12 days we've been here total, Mm -hmm. but we hunted for 10 uh, days. It was a 12-day season. We got here two days late into the season, so we hunted the last 10 days of the season. Yep. And It's been a grind. Oh, boy. <laughs> but it's been fun. It is a grind. That's what I tried to tell Yogi, like, coming into this hunt. Um, I had this tag a few years ago, and I got the tag again because my dad had 19 years worth of points, and we we partied in, and we both draw, uh, drew the tag. He didn't come on the hunt because he was working um but he you know said hey go have a good time and the last time I had this tag a few years ago it was one of the hardest hunts I've ever done like it's big big wide open country desert country and uh Nick my producer uh and I I mean we I think I killed on day seven of that hunt and this year we went to day 10 Mm-hmm. It was a rough one. Yep, it was. I st- we showered last night for the first time in 11 days. I still haven't washed my hair, so we're going on, yeah, 12. And it was a quick shower in the back of a horse trailer with a little hose and boiling water off a propane stove. Hey, man, I was grateful <laughs> for oh, yeah, that was, shower. It was nice. It was awesome. My legs were black. I was going to do the shower bag out the, from the, hanging from the tree. but In a cold shower at that. Yeah. yeah no, the heated <laughs> one was so nice because it was chilly last night. Mm-hmm. But the heat has been, man, this is so hot. Like when I had this tag last time, it was cold during the day. Like we froze. Right. We had coats on. Was it snowing too? No, but I, I think a couple, like one day, it rained for sure one mm-hmm. or two days because the day I shot my deer... Last time I had the tag, uh, it rained and it was freezing. Like Nick and I sat under a tree and it was raining and it was flipping cold. And I had spotted some deer in the morning and I saw where they had bedded down. And I told Nick, I was like, let's just go wait it out, you know. And when the, the storm came in and the wind started blowing and the barometric pressure just dropped and these deer, just like 20 of them, just all got up and started moving and feeding. Mm-hmm. And, you know, right before a storm and, and I shot my buck at that point. But, um, like, it was cold. And here right. this week, we're, you know, we're 11, it was 11 or 12 days no shower, whatever. Uh, it's Stop too counting. long. Stop, Stop counting. counting. But it doesn't, it, it doesn't make a difference after five. No. But we're hiking in 80 degree temperatures yep. from two hours before daylight to two hours after dark, mm-hmm. pretty much nonstop. I mean, we there's a couple days where we'd, you know, take an hour or two break and chill, but... right. Not a lot. And we're sweating our guts out mm-hmm. and wearing the same clothes every day. Our socks were Pretty so much. stiff mm-hmm. that, like, they could stand up on their own. It was when so you, disgusting. When you start smelling yourself, when you sit down and you get, like, a gust of body odor as you sit down and, like, it comes up through your gear. From under funk. Mm-hmm. <sighs> it's not a good sign. And, well, if you self can smell 
you know, if you can smell yourself, it's not nice for anybody else. It is. Well, and what's so, and what is worse is not only could we smell ourselves, but we were sleeping in a two man tent. Yeah. Oof. <laughs> it's a good thing we love each other. Mm-hmm. Cause that's rank with a capital R. Yeah. Yeah. It's not bad. I mean, like I said, after five days, I don't care. Anymore. Yeah. Well, it's like sheep hunting. <laughs> you know, if you think about it, you go sheep hunting, oh, it's yeah. a 10 day sheep hunt. Oh, yeah. you, you sleep in a tiny tent with someone and. It's kind of the same thing, but it's usually not 80. You're not usually sweating the amount that right. we sweated right. in, in and that situation. And depending on the type of hunt, you have a sort of sometimes a cabin you can go to, maybe shower or whatever. You know, it just depends. But proper backpack hunts are kind of similar to this in terms of yeah walking and uh, body odor. This hunt was a little bit... Um, every time I've been in here, it's been a little combat hunting. Like, there is people... Absolutely everywhere. And the first time I had this tag, I did not have a side-by-side. I just had my feet, and then Robbie had his mules. Mm -hmm. And we were at such a disadvantage, you know. These guys would quad into these areas, and they'd come out with deer, and Nick and I would look at each other, and we're like, what? (laughs) Um, And and it was just a butt kicker. You know, even with the quad this year, we tried to go to spots that were limiting the amount of quads. or not having them at all Mm -hmm. but it was really like we camped on this one ridge and we camped there and thank god we did because the next morning you know you're an hour before daylight you're watching the trucks and the quads roll in across the hillside Mm -hmm. everybody trying to get the prime spot or every you know 400 yards there's a truck or quad parked people hunting it's insane like everywhere we went people yeah it's uh, frustrating yeah. And, um, yeah, you can just see there's too many people concentrated in, in a few spots in, yeah. the, in this whole unit, right? Because they've either heard about it being good hunting or mm-hmm. it's easy access. Yeah. And then other spots, there's almost nobody. Yeah. Right. Because it takes work. Yeah. So, and I mean, the easy access, spo- access spots are always going to be the ones that are uh, getting hammered. Yeah. Anybody has, pretty much anybody has a side-by-side or a quad nowadays, and they take you everywhere. Yeah. You know, and then if you're willing to camp out from a quad. Which is what we did. We did that quite a bit, and you can go anywhere then. Yeah. Yeah, which was, you know, we kind of played the same philosophy with our antelope hunt out here, but we had a big base camp that we went back to every night, and this time we stayed more mobile. We had, what was it, one, two, three, four different camp locations we hit. Yeah, four. Yeah. One, two, three, yeah. four. Yeah, four. Um, so we moved around a lot in the unit. Um, and it was frustrating. You know, I had like this honey hole that I'm like, man, this is slam dunk. I know there's good deer in there. And, and it was, it's a great spot. It was a great spot. Um, there was a really nice family in there and super great people. But they brought a lot of people that happened to have tags this year. Mm-hmm. It's like 10 people. I think they probably all applied together. They all did like a big party thing mm-hmm. and, and they all went to the same drainage that um, I've hunted in the past and had really good luck. And and we were two days late getting there. And so... Because of hunting scheduling, yeah. season issues, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. And and man, they in 24 hours, they, they killed, what, like six bucks? Yeah. In 24 five hours? Or, five or five six. Five or six. And then on top of that, there was another... Guy family with, with two kids yeah, that had and tags. They had two tags, and they knew about the same spot. So, and then there was another crowded. guy yeah. there too. So right. there was like twenty something people. Not all of them had tags, but I would say fifteen people had tags, and and they were all hunting the same drainage. Because I mean, mm-hmm. it's a it is a really good spot, and they did pull some really good deer out of there on the third day. And we, I just looked at you guys. I'm like, we got to get out of here because there's you know in any hunting unit, um, there's only so many mature deer. Right. And of those mature deer, there's only so many trophy deer. And, and one guy killed a really nice five by four, beautiful buck. Mm-hmm. And everybody else was shooting, you know, basically the type of deer that I shot, you know. Right. Um, maybe not quite the age that mine mm-hmm. has, but um, but they were just, you know, deer. Well, yeah, and that's the thing. If a, an area is getting hammered like that spot, you never get to that age no. of that deer that you killed, right? No. You only find those kind of deer in a more remote location yeah limited access yeah and it was rough so we left there and um and i was like i just 
I don't really, you know, we just need to get away from people. And so, you know, Robbie's awesome. And, you know, we, we, we got completely out and we, we camped out. How many nights were we out there? We ran out of food. So we were, we were, we were supposed to go five. We brought food for five, ran out of food. We we spent seven nights out there, I think. Yeah, we did seven. Yeah. Which is a beautiful camp spot. It's a lot of hiking. Which yep. is, we know. had we had a minimum hour and a half hike before daylight. We had to leave camp to get to our glassing to spot. get to just the first glassing spot, mm-hmm. and then we started hunting. So it was you know our minimum mileage a day was six. Yeah, five or six. Yeah, and the most we hiked was what twelve. I was saying one day you probably did twelve to fourteen miles. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was twelve. We mapped out on Onyx twelve. Right. That as a crow account. flies. It doesn't account for all the little <laughs> terrain. turns you do and terrain. And, yeah. Yeah. We So we really <laughs> had to grind it out. But we were seeing a lot of deer. I mean, the deer numbers, my gosh, we saw so many does. Tons of does. Mm-hmm. There's lots of deer in there. Lots of deer. Just... Not a lot of mature bucks that no. we could see anyway. Um, I mean, obviously, it's still two weeks per, um, pre-rut. Yeah. So the big mature bucks are not moving as much no and then you have the heat yeah during the day so the bucks just, were bedding yeah. down and it, no more than an hour after daylight and they were holding tight mm-hmm. all day long so you had an hour to find a buck and figure out where he's bedding and try to get on him i mean you had to move so quick and right. that's where i think really hurt like our our uh, opportunities here as well mm-hmm. just the heat alone the heat the, the terrain, deer didn't want to move the, yeah that and terrain because it's big country yeah huge and like you can miss a deer so easy if you're looking in the different spot and he gets up and beds down again and he's down for all, the whole day then the other thing is the vegetation here yeah some of the sagebrush is five feet tall five feet tall yeah so i mean a deer sits down even a big buck with his head up you don't see him no and as we found out, it takes you stepping on them, literally most, most of them, for them to get up. Yeah, and then they bu- like just they bust out. Well, it's like electrocution. They're like Bink! out. So. But the younger ones would run and stop and look at you mm-hmm. um, because they didn't seem well. It depends if they got your wind or not. If right. they didn't catch your wind, right. a lot of times they'd stand up in their bed and look. Mm-hmm. Um, so that would you know you would have potential opportunity for harvest. Um, but if they winded you, those bucks would hold tight until you got uncomfortably close. And then right. they rocketed. Kind of like a rabbit. They tuck in and sit yeah. tight and then yeah. they bust out. Yeah. yeah. The first morning we got here, we passed on a, I passed on a, well, we didn't even see the deer. That was what's crazy. We're glassing on a hill and less than 200 yards below us, a whole herd of deer moved through. And the only reason we knew they were there is they winded us. Started blowing. And they started, yeah. And we was like, holy smokes, how did we miss these deer? And we start looking. We pulled the spotting scopes over to where we heard the deer blowing. And, you know, there was a mature three by three. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, good, good age. Yeah, good age. Small frame buck, though. Yeah. Just wasn't what I was wanting <sighs> to shoot. But that's, again, the terrain. Because we were sitting in a good glassing spot. But it was a gradual slope below us down to the flat. And unless you walk out another 100 yards, you couldn't see down there. No. And that's where they were standing or coming across. Well, they were, yeah, they yeah. were cu- cutting in that fold mm-hmm. and, and moving over. And so we passed on that deer. Yeah. And um, uh, then the next day, we saw another deer in that same glassing point, the one I ended up taking. Mm-hmm. And um, he came in and bedded and he was at like 700 yards and i was like ah, i'm not gonna take it was 700 and 750 ish then he moved you know he primary bedded and i think he saw us like genuinely like because yeah. we were kind of moving been. around we, a little bit the sun was hitting us because yeah. it was coming up that's when they you know they like to bed the first time yeah so the sun was hitting us on that slope and with you know equipment shiny things you might have seen something that threw him off a little bit you know and it's like oh okay I'm not comfortable with going up there all the way or whatever. Yeah. And the wind might have swirled too. Yeah. But he so. went out of sight. We kind of assumed, oh, we went. he went into his secondary bed. We're like, well, you know, we'll just work our way down here and be able to glass him up maybe. You know, mm-hmm. and that did not work. I mean, we beat around in there cautiously for 
half the day. At 12.30, we sat down to eat lunch. And we were just basically, like, throwing in the towel. We were trying to track him. And we had tracked him. We did. We did a good job of tracking him. And we stand up after eating lunch, and he was bedded the whole time, 80 yards from us. Mm -hmm. While we ate lunch and BSed and we're hanging out. Yeah. You know, well, like you almost can't let your guard down around the. <laughs> you never know which piece of sagebrush a big buck's lurking well, he around. He might have been sleeping hard. Well, that could be too. When he was sitting, right? Yeah. So, yeah, it was just that terrain and the vegetation just made it tough too. And I mean, like the terrain is so big, so you think you can walk to a spot in twenty minutes, and because you can see it right there, it takes you an hour. It takes you an hour to get there. I was like, okay, that, yeah. that doesn't make sense, but you know, yeah. it's big country. Lots of places to hide for those deer. Yeah. Especially with the bush being so thick in places. And there's obviously not a lot of big bucks, mature bucks mm -hmm. here. But the next day we saw uh, two forking horns together. One was a tiny, tiny little baby one. But one of them was a big forking horn, like 24 inches wide. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we jumped them out of their bed with a bigger one held tight. The little one stood up. Mm -hmm. And what it was, I bow range from them. Pretty much. And then they bolted, and they stopped at 300 yards, broadside, looked at us. I mean, that's what you want any buck to do, so mm -hmm. you can, you know, get a shot off. And it's like, right situation, wrong deer. And we kind of track them, not really trying to track them, but over the next ridge. And we got, and we, we sat in for two hours over them when they were bedded at 200 yards. Mm -hmm. We just, had lunch and... Hung we out. Had, we had service in that spot, so it was a good spot for yeah, us. Yeah, because I down. only had service in one spot in this whole place. <laughs> we had to hike five miles to get there, but you know, sometimes it was worth yeah. it. But kind of during the day, that's the only way you can hunt them in this terrain with these temperatures is to go and slowly stalk and glass, slowly stalk and glass, and then if you don't spot them, you will jump them. You know, that's how it goes. Yeah, we didn't jump anything that we know of. That was interesting mm -hmm. um, to harvest, at least you know. It's well, the one you the one you shot in the end. Well, that was we were stalking that one right. specifically right. though I when know, we jumped I know. him. He did you know, jump, though, yeah, yeah. I mean, we weren't just like <laughs> he blindly did jump, jumping. And he did not stop. <laughs> <laughs> we were ju we were stalking him, and he yeah. beat us, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Bad. Well, he's an old smart. Oh, he was smart an old smart buck. buck. Right. Yeah, like yeah. he worked us, and it you know it's hard. Like you spend that many days out here in it's that hot during the day and you're working that hard by the end of it like the morale is real hard to keep up you know every day you're like okay we gotta go do, grind this out again and and hope for a different outcome and mm -hmm. um but you just i mean it's what you have to do you get more tired yeah wore out and you know then we did it on day nine the yeah. second to last day we did a 12 to 14 hike. mile hike Oof. Without success, you know. We, we saw, saw lots of deer, yeah, know, though. But I'm saying yeah. without shooting one. Yeah. So it just grinds on you, right? Yeah. And we were talking about that, too. It, this hunt reminded us a lot about your book cliffs hunt. Yeah. With how much terrain you had to cover, mm -hmm. how many uh, honey hole, uh, hiding holes there is for the deer. Yeah. Um, there was. It seemed like there was more mature bucks in the book list, but that's obviously a different unit. It's a trophy, more a trophy unit, so you can't really compare it that no. way. But the terrain. But it, the t the waiting time for this tag, Robbie has seven years worth of points and has hasn't drawn it. Right. You know the waiting time for this tag is between six and eight years on average. For so residents. For residents, mm -hmm. so it's not like a slouch unit, no. right? And I mean, no. it's a it's a prestigious right. unit. But what's killed this unit is two generations ago uh or one generation ago like a fish and game so not when robbie who's 73 now his dad grew up hunting this unit there would be herds of four point bucks running together mm -hmm. like massive amounts of big desert mule deer bucks and fish and wildlife did a four point antler restriction and forced people to harvest four point or better bucks yeah, that's how you kill the genetics out of that one that's exactly what they did and so like you and i but that on top of not being able to hunt mountain lions and or all of bingo. oregon with, with hounds yeah it's devastating we found three different deadheads all of them were 
like super sized fork and horns basically mm-hmm. like fork and horns with like tiny crabby thirds or mm-hmm. you know what i mean they were just basically fork and horn frames with a older couple older deer older deer yeah all mature deer um all of them probably killed by lions yeah. um presumably you know uh and uh it could very much be because it wasn't the same drainage yeah if a big cat hit that drainage and got them yeah and he had figured out how to hunt it mm-hmm. and and kept going back and being successful there and 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 you know we just weren't seeing the age of deer you glass that much at prime time you should be seeing five six seven year old deer mm-hmm. and we weren't seeing them yeah well, remember that one time we were up on top glassing and i was like we scoured this whole drainage below us all the timber we looked in the timber like you saw squirrels running. That's what I was telling you. I was like, I can see squirrels or chipmunks running. How can I not find a deer? I mean, there's no deer in there. Yeah. You know? And that was kind of open timber without yeah. sagebrush. So you yeah. could see. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, we, we you spend a lot of time uh, behind glass. And sometimes as much, you know, so that your eyes hurt. hurt. Yeah. And, uh, but it it's what it takes in a unit like this. And I mean... It makes you appreciate it when you actually harvest a buck, a, a really mature buck. Yeah. The biggest one we have seen in all the 10 days. Yeah. Uh, the biggest one we've seen alive in all the 10 days. Yeah. Um, it makes you appreciate it. Yeah. A lot. Well, when, <laughs> when that buck got away the other day, I was like, man. And I shoot a lot. I practice a lot. I, you know, I shot my mule deer on the book cliffs last year at 650 yards. Mm-hmm. I was prone the be- the buck was bedded in the book cliffs. We were. In the book yeah. cliffs, yeah, I was yeah, prone. Yeah. The buck was bedded. I had tons of time to get my out, right. double check the wind. My cousin was running camera. He's like super experienced long range shooter, also. So I, I mean, I was able to double check everything with someone who's like genuinely, you know, better than me at shooting and and just make sure like, hey, just double check my work, right? Like, if, if is what would you do on this wind hold? This is what I'm getting, you know, da, 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 650. I had all the time in the world. The, the buck was sleeping. Right. You know, when he finally stands up, I take the shot. It wasn't pressured. It wasn't nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, well, this was a standing shot here. Well, in here, yeah. totally opposite, buck's 700 yards, and he's walking to his bed. Mm-hmm. And I, I just, I'm not going to take that standing tripod shot. I just, I mean, I just was like, I got to get closer. And uh, then, then at some point you're also like, man, should I have taken that shot? It was like, no, I did the right thing. But also, but is, <laughs> I think he, every hunter does that though, you the know? The thing is he was, he got up out of his primary bed and then normally they relocate a little bit and bed down again. Yeah. So we were thinking the way they were coming, those deer, up that little drainage. They would cut in front of us. Because there was a little saddle there. Yep. With an opening. We're like, oh, they're going to come through here or on the side of that opening, you know, to hit this other patch of timber and we would have been in the perfect spot it would have Mm -hmm. been like 300 yards yeah but they didn't do that no no so yeah i was frustrating because like the 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 first like big mature bodied you know deer you see (laughs) he's just like you know blow it on at day day eight ah was it day eight Mm -hmm. yeah no No, day seven because i killed him what three days later yeah yeah so day seven frustrating <laughs> and you know he's not a high scoring buck it doesn't matter just he was he's the biggest old. deer he's old his his front tooth was completely tore out of his mouth mm-hmm. his jaw was broke yeah an old old crack in it and then he had like an old pocket of pus under here yeah under his uh jaw and big scar on his hind qu- right hind quarter in in our phone scope footage it almost when he's going to bed to a secondary bed when we filmed him it almost looks like he had like a little hitch in his giddy up. Like yeah. he's a little bit sore. I don't know. I mean, who knows? He just shed his velvet. He yeah. still had a little bit I of velvet think, on the I back of his antler. I don't think it was a fresh scar. This, no. You know, he's an old warrior yeah. and yeah, he's, he's been out here old. fighting like, I don't know, seven, eight years yeah. of his life, you know, yeah. and definitely the right one to take. Yeah. And the, the nicest one we saw out here, yeah. the most mature one we've seen. So it's, it was definitely worth the wait. <laughs> Ten days for that one. <laughs> it's been a f- it's been a fun trip too. I mean, like we were ready to set up to like on day our our final day of hunting. Like Yogi and I were looking in opposite directions because I had this hellacious hike in mind. Because I didn't think we were gonna see deer in the bottom anymore. I'm like we we're gonna do this hellacious hike. Let's do it. And I'm I'm looking to 
just spend the last day on this horrible death march, which I did not want to do, but we had seen some deer in this location. After and we did a 12 to 14 mile death march already the day, the day before. before. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I didn't want to, I wanted to give it 100%, right? Like, well, yeah, of course. And I'm like, no, we're going to do this. And in the back of your mind, you're like, mm, no, <laughs> no. And then you spot all those deer going across the bottom. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I was looking down there because I didn't want to go up the other way. I was looking to where I'd seen the deer before and just making sure before we leave our, our glassing favorite point. glassing yeah. point spot that we had and where we'd seen all the deer from pretty yeah. much. And we had those buck encounters. I was like, I better make sure there's nothing moving down here. Yeah. Because there was some does on the bottom across a ways, you know, but then they kind of came our way and I was like, okay, I better make sure there's nothing down here. I'm going to sit over here and look. Yeah. And then there's a buck coming. You know, it's a different one again that we hadn't seen before. No, yeah. Had and good eye guards on him, but he was a big, like, typical. No, good front forks. Yeah, that's what I mean. Sorry. Yeah, big front, front forks, forks, but only. But um, three points. Only three point total. But yeah. he, I mean, typical, typical buck that we've seen, just three point. So there's, like, big fork and horns out here mm -hmm. and three points. Like, yeah. you know, we're, we're, like, looking at him and. He was probably a mid age buck. He was probably, like, maybe four or five. Five. Yeah. yeah. Four and um, a half. But, and he he was coming, That the thing is, so, the way the deer came up that last day in the morning. Was the same pattern they had been on. Same pattern they had been on that day that we didn't take the shot at that bucket 700 yards. Yeah. And I was like, okay, this is perfect. They're coming up the same drainage and yep. we're sitting in the same spot. And now we know. What they're doing. From experience, what's going to happen, kind of. So, I'm like, I get get you to come over. I was eating breakfast, yeah, well. glassing, just, I mean, like I was feeling a little discouraged. It was after eight the, and I know that sounds so early, but the bucks have been bedding down at 7.30 and 7.20 some of them. Yeah. yeah or earlier, yeah. like in, in, in the buck, in the situation of this buck that I shot, he was bedded before daylight. Mm -hmm. We never even saw him. No. And he was 500 yards from us. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Never saw him. But that so that was the good thing that we'd had the experience in that same spot with the with deer a couple of days earlier. So we kind of knew what their pattern was. Yeah. They wanted to come up into that little uh, pocket and they feed around in there, bed down, and then you know they might move off a little further mm -hmm. a little later. But that was kind of their comfort zone. They liked being there. Yeah. And because they came up this same little ridge as they had done uh, a couple of days earlier, I was like, perfect. We're sitting here now. Yeah. We kind of know what to do. This buck that we haven't seen before is mm -hmm. coming up this way. Let's get ready. Yeah, so I threw my gun up on my tripod, um, potentially to take a, a sitting shot. Um, but, we, you know, we weren't even sure if we were going to shoot him, what was going on. You know, we just wanted to be ready because mm -hmm. last time we weren't quite ready and in the right spot when that right. other buck came through, and we didn't want to make the same mistake twice. Yep. And I don't know what spooked him. It was so weird. Yeah. Like, they spooked, and Not they sure took off running. Yep. So that three-point that we saw come up, he w was kind of, he walked right past that spot where that other buck had other bedded. Buck the other days earlier had bedded there. He walked past there along the trees, and then he went into the trees. We lost sight of him. Yep. And then he comes running out of the trees into the clearing down to the left from us, mm -hmm. and he looking looking back into the trees like he got jumped by something. Yep. At the same time, the does are starting to blow, and yeah. the does are running all over the we place. We thought another hunter or someone had bumped them. Well, that's what it kind of looked the, the like. Lo or a, like. Or a mountain lion. Yeah. You know, because they were blowing hard and really alert. Like yeah. The does were blowing, and the ears were up, and they were looking. They were all looking in that same spot below mm -hmm. us. Our wind, if they had caught our wind, they would have gone the, the other, other way. way. Right. And so they, they didn't see us. They didn't know we were there. No. And this is still at, like, 600 yards... That, well, that buck was 700, yeah. 750. But the does were like... Yeah, the they were closer. A little closer. Yeah. So, And this buck comes running out, and then he runs down below us, and then he cuts down below us to where we can't... S he disappears in that... Um, like the, where the, the slope, terrain of yeah. the, the feature of the Right, below slope. us. By kind of angling in towards us, up towards that little saddle that we think they all cross. The does are already heading across there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the does were all up on that flat top mm -hmm. part. And then we're just getting ready... Because we're assuming that this buck's going to come up below us somewhere, hopefully up to our right. Yeah. Because he's kind of following the does, right? Yeah. He wants to stay stay by the does. and So there's an open a clearing, 
in that saddle. So we set up on that, and that was about anything from four to five hundred, I yeah. think, across. Yeah. Um, and that's standing tripod. So I'm s- set up, and like literally scanning with my pan head <laughs> on my tripod with my rifle, fling, fling, left to right, mm-hmm. scanning, looking. Um, looking for this buck to come out or a buck to come out or what's happening, you know, and a different buck runs out. Yeah. Like, but, you know. Uh, that we hadn't mm-hmm. seen before that morning. No. And so what we think happened, I don't know if that is what happened, what we think happened is because that, that three by three that we looked at that morning came up below us, went into that little patch of timber below us, below the saddle. Mm-hmm. He disappeared. The other buck comes out, so he must have bumped him out. He must have out run him, bed. yeah, like because he was spooked, so he spooked the other buck. Right. Mm-hmm. The we other, never saw that. No, buck never saw him. Yeah. He comes running out <clears throat> in the clearing, and Yogi tells me the range, and I dial. It was four fifty. Mm-hmm. I shoot, and then he goes. Well, luckily he stopped because he was. Well, going. yeah, you were stopping him. I wasn't <laughs> even ready. I'm like, no, 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 I'm not ready. But the buck was running so fast. It took me a couple of times so, yelling at him before. Like, you. I'm dialing my turret as Yogi's stopping this buck, and I'm, like, not in the optic. <laughs> well, but, you know, it, because we're so far away, and it takes a little bit for that, for, for the deer to hear, because I barked at him pretty yeah. much, you know. Yeah, you grunted really loud. Or grunted, yeah. So I, did, I didn't do it loud enough the first time because no. he didn't react. Because he's running. He's uh, um, alerted, spooked yeah. by something. So he's running. He gets halfway through that clearing at four fifty. Yeah, something four fi- around four fifty, maybe a little less, because then he didn't st- stop at the first the, the first time I, I called, and then the second time I pretty much yelled at him. Yeah. And well, then, I dialed four fifty. So, right. Yeah. Then I yelled at him pretty much, and yeah. that it still took like a second or two. And he stopped before you heard it, and he stopped, and then he looked up our way. And, yeah, that's when you let him have it. Like, literally, it <laughs> happened in less than 10 seconds. Yeah. Like, if you were to count down from 10, that's how fast. From him running out of the timber to me shooting, mm-hmm. it was so fast. And It's not an easy shot. It was a tough shot. Mm-hmm. And he went behind a tree, and we didn't see him come out. So we take off running. <laughs> take off running. And um, it turns out as we get 100 yards from him. And he's still laying there, and he's not quite down. And he tries to stand up, and um, he's really sick from being mm-hmm. shot. Mm-hmm. So I shoot him again, and Yogi and her are looking at each other. I'm like, Yogi, that's that's the deer from the other day. And he's like, no way. I'll have to look at the footage. I'm like, no, 100%. That is the same buck <laughs> that eluded us. It was the same deer from three days before. Mm-hmm. So awesome. It makes sense, though. That's his fi- favorite spot. That was his home. That was his home base. That's where he was bedding that day. Uh-huh. And that buck has literally walked circles around us for seven days before we killed him. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. He was in the same spots, moving in the same circles, yeah. doing the same deal. Like, we had walked through there we'll the probably, night before. We probably sat at that spot, I want to say, five out of seven days, mornings. Yeah. To glass. We saw him two mornings. And he was probably there every time. Or nearby. Maybe not the day after we spooked him the first time. Yeah, but could be. like he probably was there four out of five days. Yeah. You know, and we saw him two. Yeah. It's they, it's unbelievable the ring around the rosy that you play with these big bucks yeah. out here. And it, it also, you know, to give the unit credit, maybe there was another big buck that kind of did the same thing with us. Oh, where, yeah, probably. You know, that we just you know, bumped him or he just held tight or, you know, we walked by, who knows. But I mean, with as much terrain as we covered on the last day of the last morning (laughs) to have it come full circle, it was completely just like Utah book cliffs. Mm -hmm. That was, you know, I passed on the Utah deer and then three days later I was like, oh, that was a mistake. And we dug him back out and Mm -hmm. shot him the second to last day of season. Mm -hmm. So this was really similar to that. The whole hunt Mm -hmm. had the same vibe as that book cliffs hunt where, you know, we didn't get the shot on the buck three days later, full circle. Right. I was so thankful. That's great. Oh man. The the other reason that we probably didn't see as many mature bucks on this hunt is because the season here is earlier. The book cliffs hunt was two weeks later. Yeah. In October. So this is an early 
kind of early hunt in October, and they're not rutting yet. No, not in, at all. In, in the book lifts, they were really starting to rut. We did see a couple of younger bucks that would check does. Up here, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and they would check the does, and they'd kind of sniff them, and then they'd leave. they move on, yeah. They wouldn't stay with them. They, I mean, the, the does would be doing other doe things, and the bucks would be like, yeah, you're not ready, I'm out. And you literally, we would glass them and watch mm-hmm. them do that. Uh, but those were, you know, no, they were three like, and a half year old, yeah. four year old deer yeah. too. You know, they just weren't deer mm-hmm. that we, you know, yeah. No, you're trying to find a mature one. Yeah. No matter where you pursue the wild, never leave home without Onyx Hunt. Onyx gives hunters the confidence to apply and draw tags in areas they've never set foot in, extending hunting seasons and opportunities. Always know where you stand with public and private land layers, unit boundaries, and more. Onyx can even be downloaded directly to your phone for use when you don't have service. Wherever you pursue the wild, hunt with Onyx. One thing on this hunt, like when I started out, I really wanted to like, I had high expectations for getting a really big mature deer, you know, like score wise. Like I want to get a big buck on this hunt. And, you know, we got to day eight and, you know, one of the things about this trip that I really, you know, wanted to do was my dad's buddy, Robbie was out here and he brought his mules. Mm Mm-hmm. And he packed in our, our spike camp for us and was riding every day. He'd just go out on his mules and ride. And he, you know, he's tooling around. He's retired. He's 71. And um, He's hunted this unit with his dad for, what, 40 years? 40 years. No, more than that. He's 71. 50, he hunted this when he was a years. little boy. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, forever. So this is, like, very home to him. And, and you've hunted with Robbie and your dad for over 20, 20 years. 20 years out here. Mm-hmm. And so it was, it was one of those deals where like I didn't, you know, we spent the first part of the hunt doing the quad thing and it didn't pan out and there was people everywhere. And I was like, you know, like my dad and I talked about this hunt isn't about harvesting or killing a deer. And, you know, obviously everybody wants to do that. And, uh, you know, that's always like, I'm really driven to do whatever it takes mm-hmm. to, to get an animal. Like, don't get me wrong. My dad and I are on the phone and he's like, you know, this, this isn't about that. You know, this is, this is, you know, you know, you're getting to that age and that time in your life where you realize that it's not just about, you know, killing a big animal or whatever. It's also about spending time with people. Right. And, you know, Robbie's 71. We got to sit down and camp and record a podcast. His mule, Jester, was my mule when I was 16. I mm-hmm. sold it to him. And just, you know, he taught me and you how to do a walker hitch this week. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, it was it was more, like, instead of picking up and leaving because we weren't seeing old enough deer and trying something different, which I'd normally be really inclined to just be like, <laughs> I'm... I'm I'm pretty twitchy now with staying in one zone and just trying to beat it to death and dig out something. I'm more likely to do something different if I'm not seeing what I want. Well, it just depends you know, on the circumstances. Time frame, you know? yeah. yeah. So, but I was like, no, I want to, this is how I want to <clears throat> do this hunt. Because I got this tag because of my dad. Mm-hmm. This is how my dad would have wanted to hunt this. Now, my right. dad is working and didn't want to come. So I'm like, how, you know. This, but this is how my dad would do it. How we hunted was how my dad would have done it. And right. it's like part of me really wanted to keep to that and, and spend this time as my, you know, my final cash out hunt in Oregon doing it like I grew up doing in a right. place that I grew up hunting with a person that's, you know, like a family member. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it, that made it really special. Yeah. Like, and that's, so my prayers went from the beginning of the hunt of, God, I'd really like to get a big buck that will honor my dad's points and be a good <laughs> representation and da di da. And then at the last morning, and you and I, I was, I would, I prayed with you, I think at least once. But the last morning, I just prayed to God. I just said, Look, God, regardless of harvest, I want this hunt to, you know, send me the message that I need to learn on this hunt. And, 
however that ends, I just, you know, want you to know I'm thankful and grateful for this opportunity to be in these mountains with Robbie and his mules and with my husband and hiking here in this beautiful place. And I, and I just, I mean, I just walked that trail in the morning with gratitude in my heart and, and just for the time here Mm -hmm. and what God taught me is, you know, like a couple of days ago, the deer I shot, I was going to, was going to hunt. I was, I felt like I was not settling on him, but I didn't have the same level of appreciation mm-hmm. that I did a few days later. And sometimes, you know, what God gives you isn't necessarily what you want, but it's exactly what you mm-hmm. need. And I felt like we got that from this hunt. I got everything I needed out of this hunt. Um, the, the time with Robbie learning opportunities from him spending time with the mules with you know because this what a beautiful I, country beautiful country with my husband we learned a bunch of stuff we explored and and we got a gorgeous mature buck and and we had to earn it you know it oh, yeah. wasn't uh it wasn't handed to us no, and but it, it, it's all about sorry go ahead and it just you know to me it just it this was very meaningful it had mm-hmm. a a very meaningful ending you know when we shot the deer um, by the time we were done with photos and stuff, Robbie was already ro- rode in with the pack mules, ready to load up the buck. And, mm-hmm. you know, he was just so stoked to pack this deer out because he's packed out multiple antelope with me and my dad out of here. He packed up my last mule deer. He was here this year for our antelope. Like, I got 20 years worth of hunting memories. Uh, and it just made it, like, super special to have him mm-hmm. ride in and, and be part of that. Oh, yeah. Of course. Yeah. It's that's pretty much what it's about you know old memories history Mm -hmm. and the new memories you make yeah right yeah and then the other thing you were talking about expectations people have and nowadays unfortunately that yes but in general to score is hyped way too much yeah on everything yeah that's what people talk about. Yeah. It has to be a 200 inch deer. It has to be. Well, I've never fi- even shot anything near that. Let me just well, put that out know, there. I've never shot like. It has to be a 350 like, bull. Yeah. It has to be a 60 inch moose. Yeah, whatever. No. You, you know, whatever species it is. Everybody it's wants. all the, about score. Yeah. Everybody wants the best of the best. And there's only so many trophy level animals in a mature class. Right. And the thing is, it shouldn't be about the trophy level. No. That's what people get away from nowadays. I mean, that's what people talk about. Yeah. Whereas the old tradition, like me from coming from Europe, well, the hunting traditions are really old school and, you know, I think deeper rooted just because of the history is older. It's all about management and age class. Yeah. They don't talk about trophies. Not, not, uh, there's some people that do, obviously, but most people and the way it is rooted in the old hunting traditions, it's not about score. Mm-hmm. It's about, you know, it's not about score and prestige or whatever now social media is doing to it, too. It's about managing your wildlife populations and herds and and taking out mature deer or mature animals. Yeah. Which you did this week. Yeah. Well, and it's not, I mean, it's not easy to do anywhere. You know, you harvest a a big mature animal anywhere it's you're gonna work for it and that means you pass on younger animals and that means in some situations you go home without notching a tag yeah and that's just the way it is and unless you want to fill the freezer and you shoot a younger buck yes or a younger animal that's not at its prime but you do it because you just want the meat yeah and you're not thinking about naturally managing Mm -hmm. for age class you can do that too obviously but you know, obviously, we, we're going to use the meat from this old mature buck, too. We, all, yeah. we already had some last night. Yeah, we had the tenderloins last Barbecue night. Barbecue them was perfect. Oh, yeah. So and good. we gave we gave. They Robbie were still twitching. <laughs> so fresh. Like, we ate them, let's see. Not even 10 nine hours. Nine hours yeah. after we harvested that buck. Yeah. It's perfect. Yeah, it was good. You and know? it was cool because I got to share that with Robbie. You mm-hmm. know, he got to take home half the deer, and we're taking home half the deer. And um, But this... I. Like, I just, uh, I just think it's really important for people, you know, when we all go in the woods and, and I, I was really guilty of it this week, man. I had, I'm like, Oh, I want to get a big buck in here, you know, cause you have that dream that the Steens unit ho- can hold 180 to 200 inch deer. Sure. That's true. 
But those deer are not around every corner. Mm-hmm. Like you have to work darn hard to find them and right. or, or you get, get really lucky. Exactly. <laughs> you know, which you can, can shoot happen. them on the road too if, yeah. if you get lucky. That's right. Yeah. But that's not really what it's about, I don't think. No. I mean, you. it's like we said, it's about making memories, mm-hmm. creating memories, and enjoying the beautiful scenery. Yeah. Uh, with the people you like, love, and enjoy spending time with. And then harvesting a mature animal yeah. that you get to enjoy both on your plate and on your wall. Mm-hmm. Well, and this buck is so cool. He's so beautiful. He's like 28 inches wide. Yeah. Had a big old Roman nose. Scars and everywhere. Scars everywhere. Mm-hmm. Like I said, broken teeth out of his head. Like it, it was, it's like that, that deer is going to be a cool memory for the rest of my life. And oh, yeah. this is probably one of the coolest hunts I feel like that I've filmed. Mm-hmm. Like, the the t- time lapses, the star lapses, the camping, the overnight stuff, like just the fact that we went that many days without showering, like the whole thing. Yeah, th- you can't really catch that on video though. You no. would have to. Well, I guess you could, but it's kind of gross. So I mean, you don't get the scent through the video, obviously. Nobody so. wants that. <laughs> Nobody wants that. But yeah, no, it's like it beautiful scenery. Thing. You know, it's a beautiful yeah. part of Oregon. Yeah. And. Uh, it, yeah, it's perfect. It was a whole experience, and and like I said, you know, with Robbie being here, it, it was just awesome. Uh, and he's retired; he doesn't have a lot of people to take the mules out and do stuff with, and mm-hmm. and and go hunting with, and you know, I, like I, you know, I'm glad that we were all able to do that together mm-hmm. and do a little dreaming for his future hunts. And right, I mean, we all have that those dreams, you know, and and. Uh, yeah, so it was. It makes it special, for sure. No, it was a great, great trip and awesome experience. It was hard, you know. We hiked a lot in heat in the heat, but it's just a good workout for the next time. Yeah, no, and we are gearing up <laughs> to pack our own mules into the backcountry of Wyoming, and um, mm-hmm. which was also awesome because I, I, I'm like, I got a really great refresher on the packing stuff because you know we haven't packed. We haven't packed in. We didn't do a pack trip last year mm-hmm. or this year yet. Nope. Uh, because we didn't do Hell's Canyon. Did a couple rides. Yeah, but, but not. We didn't do a pack in. Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, this will be. I've only packed in without my dad and Robbie one uh, one time by myself by myself. Right. So this will be my first time, like, being responsible for everything. But it's awesome because. You're really good with the mules, and after this week, I feel like you're going to be able to help me a lot more, especially. Oh, I think we should be all right. And then Nick's really great with them, and um, but uh, we'll see if we have another mule wreck story to tell after that trip. Oh, frick! That's the other thing. <laughs> so yeah, we're out here, and Robbie's like halfway dismounted off his mule, and he'd put his mule and parked it in a big hornet's nest, and the hornets were stinging the mule. And the next thing I know, the mules are running across the desert and I'm like, Yogi and I are jumping at them, trying to catch them. And they're uh-huh. like, yeah, peace out. Yeah. Robbie's on his head, got bucked off. Well, he didn't get bucked off. He was half off when the mule took yeah. off with bees and he got stung a bunch of times. Yogi got stung. Just once. Yeah. Mules ran back to camp, miles back to camp. With all our gear. With all of our stuff, exactly. So we're standing out there, no inReach, no no nothing, all our spotting scopes, tripods, because we hiked every every day apart from that without the mules, but I wasn't going to say no to a free backpack trip. Like Yeah, we never we never rode the mules because Robbie only had one riding saddle and yeah. two pack mules. So. Yeah. yeah. And we'd like the one day the one day we put our backpacks on the mules apart from walking in. That's the day that these <laughs> happened. I'm like uh. But there was a because it's been so hot, right? There's I don't think they have had any frost out here. Up until maybe last night there was a little bit in places. Mm-hmm. But it's been cold at night but not cold enough to cut all the bugs out. And yeah. there's been a lot of wasps hornets bees yeah um, and that was the sketchy thing we're like we're loading up the meat after i shot the deer and there is hornets and wasps and bees whatever all over it and you know you're trying to load it on mules now with bees swarming yeah that's normally not a good thing and it was so livestock. sketchy i'm like oh gosh i just <laughs> please just please get this all loaded on the mules and not have anybody get stung right And no more accidents and just get this deer out of here. Like you want to get it on the mule and tarped 
and tie it off right. with your hitch and going down the trail as fast as you can. Because mm-hmm. a standing mule with packs on is a mule that's, you want them walking. You want them going. You don't right. want them standing around. Well, the, well, the, the location where the camp was, there was a, down by a creek and there was a lot of hornet's nests right there. Oh, we had to like literally take, a, I had to take a tree branch and when we were hanging the quarters to pack up our, ba- our uh, spike camp, and I'm like taking a branch and I'm like wasping off the quarters so that you could get off in the there. game bags. Yeah. yeah, because there's literally like hundreds <laughs> of hornets and wasps and bees and whatever else surrounding the meat. Like right. the meat's all bagged up, you know, and they can't get to it, but they're surrounding it. And holy it's smokes, crazy. that was nerve wracking. It's crazy how fast they smell fresh meat. meat. Same when you barbecue, the Unreal. wasps will come in right away. Yeah. <laughs> it was. That was a little sketchy, especially loading that meat onto that one mule and then then the head, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, but we made it work. Once we got it in the manis. Well, once you got it covered. With with the, with, with the manny tarp, yeah. yeah. Once once the, the manny tarp went on and we got the walker mm-hmm. hitch tied, I think that kind of held the scent a little bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it rec- restricted the access yeah. for them to get yeah. in there. By, you know. Yeah. The one thing I was going to say about the buck you took, too is you look at him and he's old he's he's most likely i want to say he's probably eight yeah he's old yeah and you look at him and you know that next year he would have been regressing yeah even more than he already is in his horns right so it's the perfect animal to take out oh yeah out of this uh, out of this herd and you know even though the genetics are not ideal in this part of the unit that we've seen no like let something else there is there is parts of this unit that have better genetics for sure right right but then let let another buck come in yeah. and and breed the does instead of this old buck that is on his on his way out mm-hmm. right i mean with this with his condition he was in prime condition like physically big body fat lots of fat on him but he did have bruises, old scars, like a half broken, broken jaw, jaw kind of thing. So <laughs> it, might, it doesn't take much. If he has a hard rut, if he had had a hard rut this year, he might have not made the winter if it's, yeah. a, if it, if it's a tough winter, right? Yeah. So perfect deer to shoot. Perfect deer. And it's beautiful deer, you know? Uh, he is a beautiful deer. Like when I walked up to him, man, I was so stoked just to touch him. And like, I, I mean, all I can say is how grateful I was. Like genuinely... <laughs> Just grateful. And it's really interesting. Um, the same day I shot my deer is the day that I got word that uh, I got an offer on my house. And, like, this whole hunt and this whole thing has been cash-out season um, between antelope, archery elk, and this. Um, and it's, like, all comes together in one day. Right. And it's, like, I, I literally, when we load the quad and we get in the truck and we head back to Wyoming, this is my goodbye to Oregon, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah. It'll be a wrap. Yeah. And it's a beautiful way to end it, you know, with with a beautiful buck and new memories and, and we're on to the next chapter of our lives. That's right. That's right. So cash out season was uh, 75% successful. We did not get an archery elk, <laughs> but that's okay. You got a beautiful antelope. Yeah. Not f- like far from here. No, literally not far at all. No. It's like, you know not a th- stone throw away but no. it's not far away no. and i mean we're looking at these beautiful mountains mm-hmm. here that we've hunted twice now this year yep and what else do we do in oregon oh the elk the archery elk which was tough also temperatures yeah. didn't work out and it's just you know lots of hunting pressure and public well land we could have got Cows. We, well, yeah. <laughs> we shot a lots of cow elk. <laughs> a slingshot. <laughs> hey, how often yeah. do you go bow hunting and you see tons of cow elk in yeah. bow range and no bull with them? But, you know, that's my luck. So, whatever. Anyway, we well, had we a great catch. That's the season. only week we had to hunt. I know. Our tree elk in yeah. Oregon. It was the first week of September. Mm-hmm. Too early. No. And too hot, you know. Yeah. We did have some encounters and stuff, but it was just didn't work out. and. Yeah. But it was a it was a cool trip anyway. It was awesome. Yeah, super awesome. But the whole this is a great way to end out Oregon and uh, move on to the Wyoming life and mm-hmm. Wyoming. Wyoming, yeah. It's Here a real deal now. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like we love you, Oregon, but not that much. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. Well, I've only been here for a couple of years now with you. Yeah. So Wyoming sounds pretty nice to me. Yeah, we're excited to. And we have so many tags. Yes. Even this year. Yes, we do. And that's the thing. As, mean, obviously, as that's still non-residents for yeah. Wyoming hunting, yeah. we still have a lot of tags this year. So we we're gonna have a busy fall still yeah. after this. Yeah. It's already been busy, but yeah, it's gonna be fun. I'm just uh, I'm just very humbled and very grateful and thankful for this week. And mm-hmm. uh, like I said, sometimes God doesn't give you what you want; He gives you what you exactly what you need. And recognizing that sometimes isn't easy. Um, but this week it definitely played out the way it needed to. And, and, uh, I learned a lot of life lessons and made great memories. And, uh, yeah, I'm very thankful for the time we spent here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's been awesome. I, I don't think you, I have, I don't leave every hunt feeling like I've had a life lesson or something, but uh, well, some hunts are easier than others, you know? Yeah. This so one was definitely, it's a profound hunt because it's a goodbye hunt. Right. Yeah. Means a lot. Yeah. But that's it. Creating a lot of m- new memories and mm-hmm. you know, combining them, connecting them with the old ones. Mm-hmm. So thanks for taking me on this hunt. I love you, my husband. We're I love on you too, my wife. We're on to the next adventure together. That's right. <laughs> all right, everybody. Thank you all for joining us for this hunt recap for our twenty twenty two Steens Mountain Deer Hunt here in Oregon. And Sounds we're out of here. We're out. By homing bound. All right, let's do it. Thank you for listening to the Wild and Uncut podcast. If you would like to hear more, be sure to subscribe to my Pursue the Wild digital series on YouTube and follow me at Christy Titus on Facebook and Instagram. 